Welcome to the most exciting church in the East Texas area, Family of Faith Christian Church, where we are impacting families with the Word of Faith. You are now about to hear the teaching ministry of Senior Pastor Gregory O. Littlefield and Pastor Elizabeth Littlefield. We trust this message will impact and bless your life. And now, let's get ready for the Word of God. Pastor Greg has been preaching and teaching on the Word uh, in Luke 17, chapter. And so uh, we're going to stay right there in that vein. Uh, Never forget the blessing by never forgetting the struggle. Amen. Let's turn to our uh, foundation scripture and let's read Luke 17. Starting at the 11th verse. And it came to pass, and he went to Jerusalem, talking about Jesus, that he passed through the, the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and he entered into a certain village. There he met, there met him ten men that were leopard, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Where are that were there not ten cleansed, but were, but were, where are the nine? There are not found that return to glory, give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Um, our pastor has been teaching the word uh, about never forgetting your blessing. Uh, by never forgetting the struggle. Uh, I'm just going to just kind of go into it a little bit further. It says, many people struggle or have struggled with issues of life that are seemingly out of their control, issues that causes frustration, fear, fainting, and unforgiveness. Going through life marred by unresolved issues only lead to unhappiness, and it uh, strips one's joy of the Christian life. Life is meant to be enjoyed in spite of issues that may occur. We have uh, past, we've been listening to our pastor as he's been teaching on um, the subject about dealing with struggles and issues. Uh, struggles and issues are not uh, uncommon. I mean, everyone has problems that they deal with from day to day. Even... Um, when we were brought into the world as a little baby, a little baby struggles. I mean, we're born into, uh, we're born into this life with different type of struggles, which leads into issues. <laughs> you know, you can struggle like a child, like a baby trying to walk. You know, he start, starts off. Uh, they let him sit for a while, and after he have sat for a while, he in his mind, his mind is watching other people walking. In his mind, the first thing he's going to do is take a position to crawl. And when he takes that position to crawl, he eventually learns how to walk, standing and falling, standing and falling, and finally um, being able to actually walk. Now it can come about a child or a baby could have a issue with walking because if he doesn't uh, learn how to completely learn how to walk, that can become an issue if he does not resolve how to walk. That's the same way in an adult life. If we don't learn how to deal with our struggles, they will become issues in our life. Amen? Issues of life are common problems. Issues and uh, crisis that happens to normal people living normal lives. Example includes managing one relationship so that they can have a healthy and functional uh, life, 
surviving disability, coping with death, loss, uh, low self-esteem. These are different issues that people deal with from time to time. Issues of life are real. They're, 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 um, they're not something that uh, is made up, but they, be, they are real, all right? Uh, let's look at Luke 17 at a particular scripture tonight. And I want to look at this scripture where it says in verse 12, it says, And as he entered into a certain village, there are met him ten men that were leopard, which stood afar off. Okay. And um, I um, start thinking about these guys, these ten guys. Okay. And I thought to myself, let's meet these guys. Okay, let's see who they are. You know, uh, I mean, these 10 guys, they're living together, and they had one thing in common. It is possible that these guys were someone's father, someone's brother, someone's uncle, someone's nephew, someone's husband, someone's boss, or employee, a friend, fiancé, boyfriend, or even somebody's enemy. Some people think that certain things happen to people and they say, uh, if that person is having a problem with that person and they say, goody, goody, you got that because you did that to me. No, we're not going to go that way. Amen? But these guys had something in common. They had uh, a disease called leprosy. Uh, Leprosy, I looked up what leprosy was. I'm going to just give you just a plain old English uh, definition of it. Leprosy is, uh, it is a very bad disease that causes horrible disfiguration. It is also a very contagious disease. Uh, Back in the day, in the Bible day, they didn't have any medication and they didn't know the cure of it at that time. Uh, Because it was so contagious back then, lepers were forced to live separate uh, live separate from the rest of the community in leper colonies. They were not allowed back into society, and there was a bad social stigma attached to this disease. Leopards lived in a community with other leopards until they either got better or they died. They, this was the only way the people knew to contain the spread of this contagious uh, form of leprosy. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And like um, this disease that these 10 men had was common. It was common in that day to have this certain kind of disease. It says, uh, Corinthians, First Corinthians 10, 13, There had no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. How do others react to unresolved issues? I'm just going to, I'm going to play on some words. I'm going to look at the lepers and I'm going to look at our lives. Okay, I'm going to play back and forth and see how we deal with issues. The leprosy, this, this disease was an issue that they had, and it was unresolved. Um, they, they, like I said, they didn't have at that time a, uh, uh, a, a medicine that would cure it 
only way they uh, work you only way that they could uh, work with this disease was put you out of the out of the community. All right, they just put you out. All right. Uh, how do others react to unresolved issues? The leper, those with leprosy, were so despised and detested that they were not allowed to live in any community with their own people. All right? Uh, if you would, I did a little bit of research according to the Word of God uh, in Numbers 5 and 2. Um, um, back in the day of Moses, the way the Lord uh, uh, showed them how to deal with this uh, disease, he said, command the people of Israel that they put out of camp everyone who were leprous. And so that was the word of God that he gave them how to deal with this particular disease. Okay, with struggling with unresolved issues, it sometimes will cause us to feel or be separated from family, friends, and associates. Sometimes we, our unresolved issues, we begin to feel like we pull ourselves away from friends. We pull ourselves away from family because we don't know how to, how to deal with our issues, so we want to shut the door and deal with it ourselves, okay? All right? Another thing, let's look at the appearance of unresolved issues, the appearance of it. If the priest, it says, if the priest found that the person was infected, the leopard person who had the disease was to wear torn clothes. This is their garment. This is how they would uh, know that you were a leopard. They would wear torn clothes. A leopard wasn't allowed to come within six feet of any human, including his own family. So I guess they had an imaginary line, and they would see their family and say, hello, how you doing today, and go back to their colonies. This disease was con uh, so revolting that the leper were, uh, wasn't permitted to come within 150 feet of anyone when the wind was blowing. This is how scared they w was of this particular disease. When the wind was blowing, I mean 150, so you can't really see anybody 150 feet away. All right, so that's how scared they was of this particular disease, amen? amen? In dealing with unresolved issues, we sometimes lose sight of our parents. We lose sight of who we are. We lose sight of, you know, what we're doing. And we want to pull ourselves away, so far away that we don't want no one to see us. Sometimes issues, sometimes unresolved issues in our life makes us feel like that, all right? This, I'm just kind of dealing with us, how we deal with certain situations. Y'all looking like, for real? Yes, some of y'all, some of us is actually do that. Unreal dumb issues will cause, uh, change the way we talk. The leopard, when the leopard, okay, the leopard, when they spoke, they had to cover, it said they had to cover their upper lip, which means they had to cover their mouth. They had to take their clothing and cover their mouth. And they had to warn the people by saying, unclean, unclean. When dealing with issues, the word of God says, death and life are in the power of your tongue. So in their issues, in their situation, in their circumstance, it caused them to identify that they were unclean. When dealing with unresolved issues, sometimes our unresolved issues cause us to say things that we shouldn't be saying. I think I'll never get rid of this situation. I think I'll never be allowed to get an education. I think I'll never be able to find somebody that would love me. I think I'll never 
be on top. Unresolved issues make you say the wrong thing if you stay in it long enough. The power of the spoken word is one of life's greatest mysteries. All you will ever be or accomplish hinges on how you choose to govern what comes out of your mouth. They had no choice. (laughs) They had no choice, but they had to identify who they were. They They had to tell everybody that they were unclean. That was the law of the land. But the law of the land today, God wants us to change what we're saying. Even if you're in a situation, you might be sick. Even in, in a situation that you just might not have what you need at the point, you don't have to say that you don't have. Because the word of God said you have everything that you need because you are in Christ Jesus. So you don't have to identify your state that you're in because God has given you that power to speak your destiny. All right? The unclean, okay, unresolved issues will, uh, will help you define your destiny. Unresolved issue will define your destiny. The leopard was unclean. They lived alone. Their dwelling was outside in the camp. The leopard was re, uh, had to remain unclean as long as they had that disease. By what you allow to occupy your mind and mouth, you can either bless your life to great height of success or send it operating into realms of failure, sadness, and discontentment. By uh, the leopard. Just think about, uh, have y'all been around a person that's been sick a long time? You know, and some of the things that comes out of their mouth, I think I'll never be able to walk again. I think I'll never be able to, you know, see again if they're dealing with their eyesight. You know, they just, it's doom, gloom, and despair. But God has given us power. He has put power in our in this little pink thing in our mouth to declare what we desire in our life. This little pink thing can cause our our, our state that we're in right now to change. Just ordinarily saying something. Just just saying something. I'm going to have a good day today. I don't care what you say. I'm going to have a good day today. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. My God supplies all of my needs. Even though things might not be looking good right now, God said, you you have that much power. I mean, I mean, I think I think what we have uh some people not we. Some people have put this in their mind. That's foolish. That doesn't make any sense. To say something to change your destiny. But God, when he created the world, uh, we were brought up singing songs like God took the mud and he created this and he flung the stars into his socket and he did this. He didn't, God didn't work. He, he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't move. Only thing that was moving about him was his mouth. That's all that was moving. He didn't, he didn't sweat. I mean, he didn't, he didn't conjure up. I mean, he didn't stomp and all that. And he just spoke into being what we see now. You know, and if we can see our Father God doing that, and we are his children, I mean, we are image of him, created of him, then we can, see, we can do the same thing our Father God can do, can do. We just speak. But I think we have to get past what we have seen and heard, those songs 
Bibles and, you know, those different teaching years ago that God did this and God did that. But God didn't do all that. He just spoke. And if you look in, uh, in, in Hebrew, he spoke the worlds into existence. And he said the word was, let there be. Let there be the moon, the sun, the stars. He, <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's a big God. I mean, you know, he could have just took some sand and threw the sand up in there. He could have done that. But could think about it. No, if we, I mean, if we, if we are imitators of God, and so we grab the sand and we throw the sand up, and yeah, get all in eyes. I mean, we couldn't be grabbing sand and stuff like that, and you know, stomping and all like that. We can easily do what our daddy did. Spoke, speak. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and say something. And it's amazing. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just like this. I can't sing. I know I can't sing. I mean, but I'm trying my best to sing. I'll sing and I'll sound out a tune, but I'm speaking something into existence. Jesus, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I don't know about you. I mean, you Are you going to forget? Silence means, I don't know. (laughs) Sing. I mean, doing praise and worship. You know, how great is our God? Your God great? Sing. When you were in grade school, when you were in grade school, I've got some of the grade school songs. Um, this is the way we clap our hand, clap our hand. All the kids, even the boys, they clap in their hand. We're still children. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to motivate us to open our mouth, not just, not just in prayer time. Sometimes we have silent prayer and God looking at us saying, come on, say something to me. You know, I, I'm God. I can read your thoughts, but come on, say something. I want to hear your voice. You know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help us start opening our mouth. And don't be silent with God. He want to hear us. You know, I mean, uh, sitting over with Tanya, and I believe Tanya said, Pastor Leah, I know you, you, you're doing your best, but... Mm, but God said, gonna sing, baby. <laughs> Go to sing. I love to hear your voice. You know, praise and worship and all of them up there. They got the perfect voice, but your voice sounds right on. And say, so, most people say, I don't want to sing because I don't want to offend somebody next time. Uh-huh. God loves to hear your voice. So in praise and worship, don't sing. Because I've, I've, I've watched some of you all. The words up there, praise Jesus. God's up there looking at you. It's, it's show time, y'all. I mean, as God said, he loves music. He loves words with music. Do y'all love music? Y'all, y'all love music? Y'all like to sing. Y'all like to sing. If y'all like to sing, especially when a person sounds real good and you want to hear that person, you want to hear that person sing and say words. Like sometimes Pastor Greg sings to me. The words mean much. They means much. 
sometimes, I mean, he, I mean, his eyes are rolling, and oh, he's doing all of that. <laughs> but, but, but he's he's trying to make me know that he loves me by singing, by serenading me, and that's what we're doing to the Lord. We're serenading him, letting him know how much we love him. You know, we're just two lovers to one another singing and, and just putting melody to words, making up making up melodies with words, Lord, I love you, like that, something like that. But uh, that's in my press per, per time, y'all. But uh, when you open your mouth and begin to sing, especially praise and worship, and that's that's what that's that's what I'm hearing. I'm singing within us, because especially at the altar, I think we think we have silent prayer right here. <laughs> this is silent prayer. <laughs> this is worship. Worship means opening your mouth and saying, Lord, I love you, or whatever the words are. Lord, I praise you. Sing melody to the Lord. Create in your world. Words create. It starts right here, goes into your house, goes on as you drive. I think most of us sing in our car a lot when nobody's there. <laughs> but when you, when, you, when you start singing, when you start speaking, when you start opening your mouth to your situation and speaking to your issues, they have to change for the better. They have to change for the better because God has given us that much power to speak to our situations. We have to identify our situations, all right? We must identify what they are, whether they are physical, spiritual, emotional, financial. Unresolved issues can negatively affect relationships. If you don't get your issues settled, it can lead into something else. Okay? <laughs> it's all right. That's why we have divine intervention. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. God is a God that has already, in our ways, will listen to his children. In the day of trouble, in the day of my trouble, I called upon the Lord, and he answered me. I opened my mouth, and I called to him. Sometimes we have situations in our life and we don't know what to do. And there's a confession that says, uh, God, uh, it says that God, that God is raising up somebody somewhere to use their power and ability and influence to help you. You notice that when the lepers, uh, uh, back in the day, the lepers, they had to go to the priest, and the priest had to tell them what they had. They, the priest had to identify that they were lepers, okay? Well, we are blessed to have someone, God has allowed someone or somebody's to be in our life to help you identify your issues and help you walk through the issues with you. Because the, the, the lepers went to the priest, and the, they, the, the priest identified what it was. And then Jesus, after Jesus healed them, the, they had to go back to the priest, and the priest had to declare that they were clean. Amen? And so, uh, therefore, you have to have someone that you ha can go to. You have to have someone you can go to to help you to resolve your issues. It could be your pastor. It could be your doctor. It could be a trusted friend. Or it could be someone that has already overcome this particular issue. Don't, don't, don't sit up with an unresolved issue 
and let it cause you to separate yourself from your family, your friend. Don't allow issues in your life to burden you down so that you just check out of society. That's why you have to open up your mouth and say something. You can change your destiny, all right, by opening up your mouth. You can change your destiny and stand your ground. You can change your destiny by staying alert and being pres- uh, persistent in your prayer time, knowing that God is raising up somebody, somewhere to use their power and their ability to help you. Don't be a, a victim of your circumstance or your issues. You can call the shot and you can change your destiny. Be proactive. Be decisive when you begin to declare the word. God has given you the promise that whatsoever you declare in his name, in Jesus' name, it will be done. So that you can be all that he wants you to be. Don't, 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 don't stay. Don't stay in the state that you are in. Uh, in the Old Testament, there were three leopards, and they were on the outside of the camp. And they had a choice. The army had came through, and it had uh, killed all of the people in this particular kingdom. They had a choice to sit on the outside and stay the same. If they stayed on the outside, they would die. And if they went inside, they were thinking that people were still on the inside. Because if you went into the, into the camp as an unclean, the people would kill you when you walked in. But they thought they were in there, but didn't know that all the people in the camp were dead. So they had a choice to make. They had a choice to stay on the outside and die because they were hungry. Because what they had set up, the people inside would bring food to the, to the camp, the leper camp. Every day they would bring food. And it had gone three days they hadn't received any food. So they were thinking to themselves, we must get up and do something. We must do something about our situation. We can't stay here. Why sit here ye and, here and die when we can get up and do something different? Get up and do something. Get up and take a chance. They got up and they took a chance to and went inside the camp. And when they got inside the camp, everybody was there, but there was plenty of food, plenty of money. Everything that they needed was inside the camp because they made a decision to go in. Go get it. They decided to go in. Why sit on the outside of life in your issues and in your problems, in your situation, or whatever is going on in your life? Open up your mouth and say something. Decide to to go in. Your words will take you into the camp. Your your words will change your life. Y'all hear the uh, Pastor Greg's testimony on how last year he was on the floor. Last year, um, we, uh, we, we, we went through the motions, you know. We went through the motion, motion of getting up, doing our faith confession and going back to bed, getting up. Confessing the word, going back to sleep, getting up, laying on the floor, past great laying on the floor. Um, I didn't experience laying on the floor, but I experienced watching my husband suffer. You know, it's it's hard to see uh, your loved one struggling, and all you can do is pray. And all you can do is believe that God, one day something's going something's to have to change. Or something's going to have to break or something, something's going to have to give. Words are powerful. 
uh, we become transparent with y'all. One day, well, the situation was kind of heated at one time. But me and Pastor Greg, we had gotten into it. And um, I was very, very, very vexed. Very vexed. And um, I made a statement to him, and I said, if you can't take it, let's get out of it. And I was willing, for the sake of his life, to step out or step completely out of it. That's how bad it was. I told him, I said, if you can't take it, let's give up. Let's quit. And that, I think, was the breaking moment for our lives when we um, had to really ask God we need help. In May of last year, Pastor Greg uh, had a, a breaking moment when he was uh, down in Houston and he cried out to Bishop to pray for him. All that time, our mouth was opening up saying, saying words, saying words. We had to change our situation. We had to change what we were saying. And we chose... When we came to ourselves, you know, after so much, so much, so much, so much, you have to settle yourself down and say, okay, let, let's, let's see what we need to do. And we began to, uh, that's when I decided to start having that 12 o'clock prayer uh, on Wednesday. And um, I remember one time um, uh, I was in here by myself. I was just crying and praying and just crying. And, and I was telling the Lord, you said, you said that you would take care of us. You said that you would be with us. You said that you will not leave us. You said that you will not forsake us. And I began to just start just getting back into my faith confession and just, just being more adamant in saying the word. And that's when I got a hold to my business. I was faithful to this. Lord, bless my business and bless my family and all like that. And I said, Lord, you know, you have a conversation with the Lord. I said, Lord, we don't have no business. And he said, well, I said, okay. Uh, And I started confessing, okay, Lord, bless my business. Not knowing what God had set up. Not knowing what he had, you know, what we experienced, I think, us depending on one another and leaning on one another and uh, really talking to one another and really looking at one another's eyes and saying, you okay? You going to be okay? How are you doing today? Really really, really talking to one another, understanding what's going on up here so that we can help one another. And um, that particular Wednesday when we got that phone call, things broke. It it broke. It broke. It it changed him. It changed the way he, how, how he felt. It made me it made me feel like we could live again. We were like we were like we were like dying. We were here, but we were dying. We were like we didn't have no hope, but we were continually coming, expecting God to do something, something. <laughs> God do something. But God, but God, I think God looked at us and said, when I said, give up, God looked at me and said, uh-uh, uh-uh, I didn't, I didn't put that in you to give up. You want to, but you can't. You said it, but you're not. God 
God allows certain things in our life to make us, not to break us, mold us, mold us. Molding feels, don't feel good at times. Molding feels like, why are you doing this to me? You know, I, I thought I was your beloved servant. But look what happened to Jesus. All what he did went through. But God has a way of making us through situations, through life experience. He has a way of making us be what he wants us to be. You know, our plans are what we plan for ourselves. It's nothing compared to what God has planned for us. Sometimes we have to put our, our plans on hold and say, okay, God, you can have that. Let me have your plan. Whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to do, whatever you want me to say, whatever you want me to expose of myself to help somebody else. Too many times we don't say, we don't tell what's going on in our lives. Somebody else is going through the same situation, and you won't say anything. And your testimony could help that person to make a decision that will change their life for the better. Sometimes we have to expose those hidden things that we dare not tell anybody. But Pastor Lee, I thought you were a faith woman. Oh yes, I'm a faith woman, but I'm human too. I cried too. But God knows how to make his children. He knows how to mold them. Sometimes it's not pretty. And it doesn't feel good when you're going through. It does not feel good. But he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He knows that what he has for you is better than what you've been through. It's worth it all. Through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I learned to depend on God. I learned. We learn how to depend on God. When God said he's going to do a thing, we have to go through it to get to it. I don't want to go through this, God. Jesus said, he told his father, he says, I don't want to do this. I don't want to die. I don't want to be separated from man. I don't want to be, I made friends with all of these people and to die, to leave them, but nevertheless at thy will, at thy word, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. Oh, yes. It's the making of us. It's the perfecting of us. We come more, come more closer to God when we go through the situation. It makes us more determined to live for him, to stay closer to him. What we went through last year has caused us to be more closer to him and closer to one another. Some things, situation, people can't take it and they just can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take it. But God's there to help you to go through it. So praise the Lord for the struggle. Praise God for what you go through. It, it, it makes you appreciate what you have. It makes you appreciate your family. It makes you appreciate your children. It teaches you how it teaches you how to really live and love to live. Amen. Praise God. I hope I helped you all. Just point out the word of God and share with you my side of the story. Uh, we have an awesome pastor, a pastor that really love God. We're very blessed to have a pastor that would give up his life for the sheep. Amen. And pastor that's almost literally gave his life for the sheep. But pray, thanks be to God, 
He has caused, God has caused us to triumph. Triumph. I'm going to tell y'all, y'all take the, you all that have problems and situations going on in family, sit down, sit down, talk to one another, talk to your family. Don't be, don't be so quiet and I'm going to deal with it by myself. You know, my husband don't need to know, my wife don't need to know, my friend don't need. Talk, talking helps a lot. Somebody got the answer. You keep on talking to the right people. I'm, I'm, t- I'm not telling everybody. I'm not telling you to get on Facebook and tell people about your business. I'm talking about somebody that is is saved to the bone. Somebody will take your situation and pray about it, not talk about it. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just rack. I'm gonna just tell y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Be careful who you tell your problems to. Because sometimes you tell your problems to the wrong person, it magnifies it. Instead of praying about it, it's talked about. Okay? Be careful. Be careful. All right? This has been a Works of Faith broadcast, and we pray that this series of teaching has been a blessing to you. Take this podcast, download it, and listen to it again and again, or share it with your family, friends, or coworkers. If you do not have a place of worship, please pray about making Family of Faith Christian Church your home, or find a Bible-based word teaching church that will bless your life. Psalms 92.13 says that they that are planted in the house of our God shall flourish in the courts of the Lord. Family of Faith Christian Church is located at 3299 Highway 271 in Tyler, Texas. You can contact us at 903-592-3340 or visit us online at www.ffcctyler.com.